welcome back to the craft enthusiast i'm your girl ken i'm here to share with you some of my completed projects some of the whips and maybe even some of the projects that i'm thinking about working with i am a new podcaster and if you are new with me and new and joining me thank you so much for um joining me today so as I mentioned in my very first podcast, I was working on the Kinnigan cardigan. I um, love this particular cardigan and um, I was put onto this particular cardigan by Taylor Earl from Fiber for the People. I think she's Taylor Earl from Fiber for the People. And um, she had made this lovely Kinnigan cardigan. And I was just like, man, I wish I really could make that because it seems like it's really easy and I'm all about quick and easy knits or crochets. So I saw it, I loved it. And I was like, I gotta make it. I really wanted to make it in the same yarn that she used, but I think it was like, might've been out of her personal collection. and. It probably had been some time because every week or so she does introduce yarn because she is um, a seller of yarn and so um, she personally was not selling that in her shop that particular yarn in her shop so I ended up trying to find a bulky weight yarn which was similar but I'll share that with you in a moment but I just want to share with you actually the cardigan I will try it on here and um, show you what it looks like particularly. So um, this here, and let me come back some just a little, is the Kinnigan cardigan. It is beautiful. I actually um, looked this up fairly quickly. What I wish I would have done was made the cut pattern doesn't call for this, but I wish I would have done like a nice border edge on here because like if you don't put like a particular edging, you know, the edges on a knit piece will definitely curl and these are actually curling. So I don't know, I might go back and try to add in like some type of, of, um, edging edging um but as of right now I, I love this cardigan i love it it's very warm i actually made it with and let me take it out the bag so you can actually see try to keep my yarn in like some type of plastic bag um until i get to it <laughs> And so I made this with, wow. I made this with Joanne's um, Big Twist. I made this with Joanne's Big Twist. This is a natural blend. I think it's like acrylic. Yeah, 80% acrylic and 20% wool. And so I um, I made it in the color Blush Mix. And I used about one, two, three, four, about four skeins of it in order to make this. And I made this, of course, in a large, because I'm not a small woman. And so, not the smallest woman but I made this in a large, but I love this yarn. If you can see, it's like a little bit of mauve with very variations of pink, it's like a peachy rose color kind of colors. And I particularly love this because um, um, I like pink per se, pink and blue are two of my favorite colors. I don't know, I'm like on a spectrum between pink, blue, and sometimes even like bluish greens I like, or turquoise kind of color. So um, yeah, when I saw this, I, I was like, I gotta make it because it's 
really quick to make. Very, very beautiful. And I just love it. Um, and it's warm because here it is very cold um, now at this particular time of the year. And so I made this um, so that I could be working and wearing my cardigan and staying warm throughout this winter um, because it is freezing outside. It's very, very cold outside. So anyway, um, thank you, Taylor Earl. I don't know if you ever watch this or ever see this, but thank you for putting me on because I really love the cardigan. It was fairly easy to whip up and like you indicated, and I really, really, really love the cardigan. And so thanks. And um, yeah, so moving on. I also, as we discussed last time, I also was working on the Simple Pleasures hats. As I indicated before, the Simple Pleasures hats from Pearl Soho. I really love this hat. When I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, I gotta make this hat. I just love the the large rim on here, the the two rib binding that they do. I mean, the two rib stitch that they do on here, this rib stitch that they do. I just loved it. And I was like, oh, I love the fact that it's so large and it looks like a nice and cozy and warm hat. And so I have it here in my bag. I made this, of course, with with um, a mohair, which was the Tassock mohair yarn and the color Ripe Boysenberry. And so um, it's made out of 60% fine kid hair and 40% silk. And I made that it in combination with the Lion Weight 100% Merino wool and the color Red Plum. And so I have, I know we discussed last time that I've made this hat before and clearly I've, I've made it before for another family member of mine. And so I love the way that it looked, but I deviated from the pattern slightly because the pattern definitely calls for you to use the 100% merino wool um, and then continue on with the body of the actual hat in the mohair and the merino wool um, together as, you know, two stranded together. And so the last time that I made it, I used, I deviated from the pattern by using the merino wool and the mohair com completely throughout the hat. This time I did not. I actually made it exactly as though the pattern called for, which was the 100% merino wool in the base and around the ribbing of the hat. And then in the body of the hat, I actually used the mixture of the two, which was the mohair and the merino wool. So, merino wool. So I am loving this hat. It is a very quick knit. I think I started it the day before yesterday and unfortunately I wasn't feeling well and I got kind of sick and so I kind of worked a little bit on it didn't really work on it was kind of in and out that day because was taking some medicine to try to knock out the cold and so I just picked it back up and so I'm pretty much almost done I need to um decrease the top of the hat decrease do some decrease stitches at the top of the hat and then close it up and then it will be completely done. I mean, I'm so pressed to wear this hat that I might just not even block it and just put it on. Okay, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna definitely block it because my hair kind of needs to be protected and I need to really clean this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna block it and then <laughs> I'm gonna block it and then I'm going to actually wear it. And so, um, but I am so happy because I really, really wanted to make this hat. I originally wanted to make it for myself. And then I was like, wait a second, 
Hmm, maybe I should make it for another family member of mine who loves blue as well, who loves blue. And so I made theirs in a blue and then I really, really like the one in the picture here, which is the same as that color that I made the actual hat in. And so, baby, let me tell you, when I finish this hat, I'm going to throw this bad boy on and um, show you the finished product and hopefully you love it too. And if you are interested in making this hat, please visit, of course, uh, for Pearl Soho because this is a free pattern and it is called the Simple Pleasures Hat. And so I hope you love it. It has that fuzziness of the merino, which I just love and it's so soft. I love their mohair. That's a soft mohair I really, really like to use. It's a I really, really like using it. It's so soft and easy to knit with and it doesn't tangle. I've winded these balls up on my um, Knit Picks winder, which I have. And so um, I winded them and and trust me, I, I knitted this in a short span of pretty much two days and I'm pretty much done. I probably could have completed this in two days, but you know, unfortunately me getting ill, I wasn't able to actually complete it, but it is in the works. So a whip of mine, the Simple Pleasures hat, if you love it, if you like it, go for it. And once I complete mine, I will show you the finished product. All right. So, open the bag. And also, um, also last month was a um, special month for me. Um, it was my birthday month and so I ordered this. I was on Etsy and I found this local um, vendor, not local vendor, but this vendor who actually sewed crochet hook bracelets and I found it and I thought they were the cutest thing. I found this, this bracelet at the, I think her name is Carol's Daughter. Carol's daughter um, store. Um, and no, it's not the Carol's daughter for hair products, but my sis, my sis out there that is a totally different Carol's daughter. <laughs> but um, this is um, lady named Carol, this lady named Jackie, she has a shop called Carol's daughter. And she is Carol's Daughter 77, Carol's Daughter 77 on Etsy and Just Carol's Daughter on Instagram and The Real Carol's Daughter on Facebook. And I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but I just wanted to share it with you. And she actually um, makes, hand makes these crochet hooks. This is a crochet hook, and let me try to see if I can get it up close to you. It is a two point, I don't know if I can bring it into focus or not. A 2.5 millimeter crochet hook, and it has like this little hook on the end, if you can see. And it is too cute. When I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta get it. And it's in blue. My, one of my favorite colors. I was like, oh heck yeah, I'm going to purchase this. And so I purchased it. It probably was, I don't even think, I, I think I paid like $6 or something, maybe less for this. And it was the cutest thing. And I was like, well, I like bracelets and they have a crochet hook bracelet. Come on, I gotta get it, I gotta get it. So. I ordered it, it came in this little packaging envelope where she says, thank you for your order. It is the cutest thing. And so I um, purchased it and and I just love it. I just love it. And Carol, if you're seeing this, shout outs to you. I may go back and order another and maybe another color. I'll have to see what other colors you have. I think she had like yellow and I don't know, green and blue but um yeah i love the bracelet thank you so much it was beautiful and it's just shipping was very quick she shipped it out i think i ordered it and then it came in like a week and i was like whoa yes because who doesn't love to order something and then 
it comes within that week. It's like great because by week two, week three, you're like, oh, once it comes, you're like, oh, I, I ordered this, like, <laughs> but yeah. But anyway, so yes, if you like the bracelet, please check out Carol's daughter, 77, her Etsy shop where she sells these beautiful, beautiful crochet hooks. And um, grab one, grab one. I mean, I know it's not an actual crochet hook that you can use to actually do a project, but it's, it's just cool to have, you know? It's just cute, cool to have in your little jury, jury selection, because I'm one, I love bracelets, I love earrings, which I don't have any on today, but I know I'm gonna love earrings or ne not really most so necklaces. I will wear necklaces, but pins, I love pins. And so, um, yeah, if you're interested, definitely check out her shop and order one. I paid for it with my own money. And so it was only like a few dollars and definitely, if you love it, grab one. All right, so moving on. So this was something that I should have shared last time when I created my um, first podcast video, but needless to say, I have it, I'm gonna share it now. So I um, love Marquita um, Naughty Crush um, podcast or YouTube channel, whatever. I know not for sure what she calls it, but I love her channel. And so though my schedule does not permit for me to be able to actually um, catch up on all of the episodes of her channel, when I do catch it, I'm like, we're here. We are here when it comes to her, des her designs and what she likes because not only am I a knitter, I am a crocheter. I initially learned to crochet, as I mentioned in my first podcast video. And she creates these beautiful crochet designs from scratch, like her own personal designs. And I love that, like I inspired to, to, to do that one day. And so she is an inspiration to me because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm always strictly by the pattern. I have to follow a pattern and maybe that's just the way that I've, I've been indoctrined or I've indoctrined, if that makes sense or if that's right. But, um, and even in my own profession, we're encouraged to follow patterns or see patterns and trends. And, and so, um, though, I've never actually created my own um, my own crochet pattern. I aspire to do that one day. And so, needless to say, Naughty Crush put me on. Um, not only does she put, put it away. Not only does she does she creates her own crochet patterns, but she also will knit from or crochet from a pattern. And so. Um, she put me on to crochet ADHD and the pursuing piece shawl that crochet ADHD design. When I saw this shawl, I was like, I gotta make it. I got to make it. Like, if there, I gotta make it. And so when I saw the shawl, I was like, it is a summer shawl. So it's made, it's a summer shawl but I was like, I have to make it. So let, let me show you here. So this here is the Pursuing Peace shawl. Let me tell you how beautiful this shawl is. Oh my goodness. I just love the shawl. I love the colors. I love the pattern. It was very simple, very easy. Double crochets. Um, um, a lot of double crochets, but look at this. Look at this, y'all. It is gorgeous. Gorgeous. And look at those crochets through the back loops. Baby, tell me. But this shawl is just so beautiful. And thank you so much to Naughty Crush 
for putting me on and thank you crochet adhd for even creating the pattern because i loved it i made this pattern out of premieres momenti um momenti yarn and i made it in the color meadow it is like a mixture of orange and pink and yellow and it is so beautiful beautiful it's a medium weight yarn it's made out of cotton and acrylic and um and so i just i just loved it when i saw it um naughty crush did not make it particularly in this but I had this yarn in my stash and I was like, I'm definitely going to make this shawl out of that pattern. Oh my goodness, this, this shawl, let me tell you, it is so beautiful. Now, I show, after I finished the shawl, I really love this shawl. After I finished the shawl, I, um, I um, showed it to my mom and my mom was like, Candace, you really should have made the shawl a little bit bigger. <laughs> I probably should have, but yet this is a summer shawl. And so it's not made it's for me, it's a summer shawl. And I did not make it as though it should be a really, really huge shawl because of that. Um, it does have a little bit of weight to it because of the cotton. And I don't know if you work with cotton yarns before, but you know, they can be kind of a little bit weighted when you start using a lot of skeins of it and so um a lot of skeins skeins of, of of cotton so this particular shawl as you see it is gorgeous and so um but i just particularly love this shawl thank you so much for crochet adhd for sharing this shawl with with us in the crochet community and thank you, Naughty Crush, who are sharing it as well, who introduced it to me. So, um, yes. So, in the meantime, um, in the meantime, uh, I also was working on another crochet project. And that was, I just wanted to whip up something really quickly. And that was like, I was in Hobby Lobby, a Hobby Lobby, and I came across this, um, their Yarn Bee Scrubology yarn. And so they had like a free pattern that was there. Like, you know, you can just grab one that's hanging up and in that pattern little, uh, I don't wanna say flyer, there was a pattern for a dishcloth. And so I whipped up this dip, this this dishcloth and it actually took me like two days. And this really should be like a day project. You know what I'm saying? It should be something really quick, like a few hours to whip this up. But I, I don't know, for some reason, for some reason, and I don't know, you guys can tell me, for some reason, I feel like the easiest or the most simplest patterns are sometimes missing that key, um, that key instruction. Like, for some reason, like the most difficult patterns I notice or intermediate, should I say, or more advanced patterns, they will have, or maybe even certain, maybe it just goes by certain designers, I don't know. But for some reason, I notice that they have the steps in there and they'll provide you step by step what to particularly do. They, they go into depth into how to actually create a particular project. And for some reason, like I noticed that the most simple projects, they'll like assume that you particularly know something and just will leave out that assumption step, should I say? <laughs> that in, and so I think it was difficult for me to kind of grasp what they were asking for me to do in the particular pattern. But needless to say, I ended up creating it. And this is an actual dishcloth. Now, mind you, it seems like a fairly, it's a fairly large dishcloth. Um, the material is very textured and uh, rough because it's a scrub. It's supposed to be used as like a scrubby, a scrubber. And I think even in the little 
um, advertisement that they had that it basically, the free pattern advertisement that they had, that it even was like, use this to like scrub your fruits and vegetables with. And so I made it and I was like, oh, it'd be something really quick, you know, just to knit and crochet. And then I was like, wait a second. Like, I think I started this pattern like two or three times. And then on top of that, it was kind of difficult because um, to frog it back when you made a mistake. And so I kind of didn't like that. But anyway, I made it. And then when I was done, I was like, hmm, I actually kind of really like this. Um, so, but I want to do something else to it. I think that um, it's not, I don't wanna say thick enough for me because it is thick, but it's not sturdy enough for me. And so I think I want it to be kind of a little bit more solid. And so I decided to go back and order some more of this. And for some reason, can anybody tell me why Hobby Lobby really, like they put their yarns on sale, but they really have yarns more than 30% off. Not like Joanne or Michaels or any of their bargain yarn places where you can get pick, go pick up some bargain yarn from and you can get like 40% off or something like that. Like Hobby Lobby, never, never. I've only ever seen in the past year that I've been put on a Hobby Lobby that they only have like 30% off sales. I don't know, but anyway, side note. But anyway, back to the pattern. Anyway, so I ordered some more yarn and I ordered some additional cotton yarn to actually try to make this with. So I'm hoping that it will end up being a little bit more solid for one. But if it doesn't, I mean, I'm gonna try it out, see if it works. If it does come out the way that I like, I will actually then share the pattern with you. Um, we'll give you the name of the pattern, I'm not gonna share the actual pattern, but give you the name of the pattern that I actually use and then give you my feedback on what I thought when I actually tweak the actual um, yarn and gauge that they have with the pattern and give you my, my thoughts on the completed project because my mom was asking me if I create some to actually give her, give her some because she wanted to use these. But um, I really think I need to kind of, like I said, tweak the project a bit to my liking and see how it comes out because this here, it's nice, but it's, it's kind of flimsy in a way. Flimsy, should I say flimsy? And so I really would like to um, make it more of a solid, solid, thick, kind of solid washcloth. Cause who doesn't love like a thick, solid, like um, not washcloth, but dishcloth or even a washcloth. Dishcloth or washcloth, it just, who doesn't, who doesn't? So once I go back, try to perfect it, and I eventually I will share it with you. It's probably not one of the, the things that I'll do immediately. It'll probably be in between the other projects that I am I have in mind. Plus yesterday, oh my goodness, yesterday, I was um, hanging, you know, chilling out with my kids and one of my children asked me to, to um, make them a beanie with a pom-pom. Now, mind you, I've made her a beanie before, but um, um, this time, again, I don't know where the original beanie is, but this time she asked me to make her another beanie and I'm like, okay, not a problem, I'll make it. But this time I saw, I think it was Taylor Earls indicated that she had like um, a pom-pom maker. And so I ordered a pom-pom maker. And so I'm thinking about um, crocheting that beanie because I'm knitting a hat now of course with the, the simple pleasure shawl but now I think I want to try to crochet the beanie that I'm going to make for her and then also another one of my children asked for a scarf which I was shocked because <laughs> um, you know I never really make a lot of things for my own, for my own children. They never have really ever asked. I think, you know, I have, well, I can't say that. I have made like scarves and I have made like a hat or something like that before, but you know, I'm, I never really, 
consider putting them in the rotation of, of actually making stuff because you know I see a lot of people here on um, that are knitters and crocheters and they're like oh yeah I'm making this for my family I'm making that for my family like I really don't do a lot of mix for um, my own kids and maybe that's because they're older and so my own children because they're they're older and so I didn't think that that would be something that they would want in a, in a sense you know you know especially like around Christmas because they're big on gaming or <laughs> just other things you know computer wise electronics like I, you know I never really thought that they would want something really handmade by their mom and, uh, and so I am going to, since they asked yesterday, I'm really going to get into this thing. I am actually going to try to make, hand make them what they asked for. And so I haven't selected as of yet, um, particularly what I'm going to make. But when I was watching the Naughty Crush, she mentioned she made this cute, cute, cute little beanie. And I, and I was just like, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. I don't think that she has a pattern for it as of yet, but if she does come out with a pattern for it, babe, I'm gonna be the first, one of the first to get to try to get that pattern. Cause that hat was just too cute. It was like unicorny and unicorny. And I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna tell you, but I like unicorns, so. <laughs> I like unicorns i have a fluffy from the minions that i just love <laughs> so um um once i do decide on a pattern um i will definitely share it with you all and um i'll try to i'm sure i probably got some yarn in here somewhere because we're not going to talk about my yarn stash <laughs> But um, I'm sure I have some yarn where I'll be able to make it. Um, one particularly asked for their make to be in the color of green. And the other child didn't really say the preference on the color of theirs. So I am going to though, I do know one of their favorite colors is blue like me. Who doesn't love a good blue? And so um, once I have that together, I will um, uh, pick a pattern. Um, I will definitely share it with you all. All right, so that's it for me. I'm sorry that I'm sorry um, if the video is staying quite long, but thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys joining me. And let me know if you have some ideas on what I should make. One child would like to have a um, beanie hat, the uh, which I would like to crochet. The other child is interested in having a scarf in the color of green. And so um, if you have any ideas, any pattern ideas that you think I should, should try, please let me know. When um, the one that would like to have a hat is female, the other that would like to have the actual scarf is male, the green scarf is male. So um, just keep that in mind and um, let me know. If you have any ideas, please feel free to comment and share. All right, and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you like the actual content that I'm making, please, please, please subscribe. And I look forward to, I look forward to, um, I'm sharing more, more completed projects with you next time. All right. Have a good one.